Uh, if you're at the Birmingham NEC show last year, the UK's biggest indoor classic car show, uh, you may have spotted Ian Tisdell's pre-war Mercedes there, which scooped car of the show. Um, and uh, very few people knew what it was. And I must admit, I'm in that camp too. If it's a pre-war Mercedes, must be a 170. Am I right? You're very close, very close. Um, it precedes the 170H. This car's called a 130 because it has a 1300cc engine or a W23 in terms of uh, Mercedes consecutive numbering, project numbering. Um, this went on sale around about the same time as Ferdinand Porsche first put words into his manifesto for the people's car that he'd recently been commissioned to develop. And when was that? 1934 this went on sale okay. um, and uh, a lot of people say um, isn't that a 130H? Uh, H referring in German to rear. Well it started that way as a project um, but in the event because the Mercedes range didn't have a front engine car with a 1300 engine they felt it wasn't necessary to use the H so this is a 130, uh, just a 130 and the car you mentioned its successor was the 170H and the reason was that when they came out with uh, a new 1.7 litre engine for a, a small to medium sized car they made one car which was rear engine engine like this one strongly based on this and an entirely different front engine car so now they had two 170s so they get went back to the idea of calling the uh, rear engine one H for heck motor and the front engine car 170 V interestingly when this car was replaced after two and a half years with the larger but very similar 170 H now they decided to pr present the two ideas differently. The rear engine 170H was better, better finished. Um, it was it was faster because it was a little more streamlined, despite having the same engine. And they decided to make to present that as a premium product, a premium option. The 170V was significantly cheaper. In the event, the market preferred the known front engine um, concept um, and they were able to enjoy it for a lower purchase price than the rear engine cars. This sold quite well for uh, two and a half years. The 170H replaced it completely um, but production finished when the war broke out. Um, and even though the 170H was a, in many ways a better car, a more mature version of the same thing, um, that was the end of rear engine cars for Mercedes-Benz. I believe that they were offered in this country, um, that they were made in both left and right hand drive, um, but they will have been very expensive because of import tariffs. And they were not a cheap car in any case, the, the, they were a car for, um, for the well heeled Mercedes buying um, public in difficult economic circumstances and so and so with one of these you could have uh, a proper Mercedes car made nicely big steering wheel with a Mercedes symbol in the middle of it and a nice horn ring um, but smaller and more expensive and less expensive so we have a, a 1.3 litre four cylinder engine Air cooled or water cooled? Good question. The, um, the because many people who see this expect it to be air cooled as as part of the rear engine formula that mm. they're familiar with. It, it deviates fundamentally from what people expect because it isn't a boxer engine, even a short boxer engine. Even though the prototypes, um, several prototypes had had a flat four engine, air cooled. Instead, it's a, it's a longitudinal iron side valve uh, engine. Um, controversial to some people, they, 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 that's a heavy lump sticking out further than a flat engine. Um, but uh, actually, although Mercedes stopped making rear engine cars in 1939 and, and never, never, never restarted until the Smart, um, so many other this is this is so much more like the typical rear engine car of the 50s and 60s across europe because my first car was a new simca thousand 
um, it had an iron longitudinal water-cooled engine so the formula was the same it even had transverse leaf spring suspension at the front uh, it had coil springs at the back just like this so the formula that um, Mercedes were minded not to continue with um, was widely used elsewhere, Fiat 600, um, all sorts of... Uh, so presumably that engine drives the rear wheels via a four-speed manual gearbox, three-speed? Well, again, there's a bit of a learning curve because, yes, there are four speeds, but the first three are conventional, conventionally selected with the floor lever. Um, reverse is where you'd expect to find first in, a, in, a, in most cars. So you've got a dog leg first, over to second, down to third then the fun starts because there's an overdrive top gear you don't get to it by going back to neutral without doing anything with the clutch you just go sideways from third and up and then just dab the uh, dab the throttle no clutch and it goes into overdrive top and then to come out of overdrive top you just flick the lever down don't go anywhere near the clutch flip the um, accelerator and you're back in third again i'm trying to get my head around that yeah so is that like a, a laycock overdrive where it's a separate hydraulically activated uh, i don't think it i don't think it is it's not a, it's not an extra set of cogs in the gearbox no but 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 the the noise that it makes going in and out which my wife Kirsten describes as sounding like a grandfather clock, suggests to me that it's got more in common with uh, some motor mowers. Uh, I think it's a sort of sprag clutch. It's, cer right. it's, it certainly isn't a centrifugal clutch in there, uh, but it makes a clickety clickety click noise. Uh, it's like a ratchet. You may recognise Ian from the Tatra Type 97 video, uh, so he obviously owns that car as well as this, both 1930s rear engine European cars, um, so I guess it's inevitable that comparisons are made between the Tatra and this technically and dynamically. How does this compare with the Tatra to drive? Well, it's not such a powerful car and it's four years younger as a, a sorry, four years older as a design. Um, it's, it's, it's different in terms of its structure, but uh, it is related to older Tatras than the rear engine ones. It's a smaller engine than the Tatra that you may have seen on a previous um, uh, clip, um, 1300 instead of 1700, so it's not as quick. Um, it's side valve, um, and actually typically for a side valve engine it sort of tends to strike you with its torque rather than its power. Mm. Um, so you're not rowing it along on the gears? That's right, which is probably just as well because the gears are more of a challenge to manage in modern traffic than the much more conventional gears of pretty well anything else. It's not the, the, the long distance vehicle or it isn't yet the long distance vehicle that the Tatra um, definitely is, um, but it's a nice quality job. It's obviously made very nicely, it's designed carefully, it's appointed attractively um, and just sitting in it and looking at the, the nice timber window surrounds in the doors um, and how everything's put together. Um, it's, a, it's a nice little car for hard times is how I'd describe it.